Hey, I'm Travissimo. And I'm Michelangelo. And we are the, the Pizza, Pizza Brothers. Brothers. We have an extremely exciting episode today, huh, Trav? Yes, we do, Mike. Today we're going to talk about my all-time favorite pizza, the pepperoni pizza. And as most of you listeners know, a pepperoni is a spicy Italian American variety of salami usually made from cured pork and beef. Yup, and the term pepperoni is a corruption of pepperoni, the plural of pepperoni, the Italian word for pepper. And when you say pepper, Mike, it's important. Actually, not even just important, it's extremely important that our listeners know you're referring to the vegetable and not the spice. We are the Beer Amigos. We like beer. We are Amigos. And that's why we call ourselves the Beer Amigos. We are the Beer Amigos. We like beer. We are Amigos. And that's why. Hi, this is Phil Ebel and John Gomez from Great South Bay Brewery, and we'd like to wish the Beer Amigos a happy third anniversary. Cheers! Hey, this is Travis. And this is Mike. And we are the The Beer Beer Amigos! (laughs) In celebration of the Beer Amigos' third anniversary, we thought it would be fun to release a Best of the Beer Amigos episode where we revisit some of our favorite podcast interviews that we conducted over the last three years. But before that, I need to get real for a minute, and I need to say how in the past three years, we've truly made incredible friends and have been blessed to be part of this rewarding and growing Long Island craft beer community, you know, comprised of awesome people and awesome friends. And truly, we hope you'll allow us to continue to be part of this community by allowing us to continue to conduct our interviews by allowing us to continue to wear our huge sombreros wherever we go, by allowing us to write our silly songs, by allowing us to film our silly videos. Truthfully, thank you all. The past three years have been a blast, and we hope to continue to be out there podcasting for you for years to come. So without further ado, here are some of our favorite podcast interviews that we conducted over the last three years. Hey, we're here with Barry, the craft beer specialist from Claire Rose Inc. Distribution Company on Long Island. I'm going to hand this mic over to Mike. Hand the mic over to Mike for some awesome questions for Barry. This is Mike on the mic. Barry, um, tell us about what you do, man. Claire Rose is such a huge fixture on Long Island in regards to distribution and just really playing a huge role in craft beer in general. Now, you you distribute a lot of locally made beers. So tell us about kind of what your role is in that and, and, you know, bringing that to the table. My role, I'm Barry, by the way, from Claire Rose. I'm the craft beer specialist for Nassau County. So what I do is, is I uh, educate people about the great fucking, the great, can I say that? Yeah, you can say it. All right, for the, the great beer that we have in Claire Rose's portfolio. Uh, we have a lot of local breweries. We have the three biggest, I would say, in Blue Point, Great South Bay, and Long Island. And people know that. So they, they're looking for always more eclectic, different breweries. So you'll see that we have, uh, we have an expanding portfolio. Uh, we just got Victory uh, from Downingtown, Pennsylvania, um, that had a sh- uh, you know, short stint where they weren't on Long Island. They weren't distributed. We just brought in Dark Horse from Marshall, Michigan, considered to be the next founders. Uh, they're 26 ranked brewery in the country. Kind of my baby, uh, Crooked Tree IPA and their black, great beers. Um, and then, you know, we're always looking to expand our portfolio. So we're just here to sell great beer, and that's what I do. Go around Nassau County and sell great beer to people. Tell them about it. So. Sounds good. Do you feel like, uh, as a local person yourself, obviously, like, growing up on Long Island or, you know, being a resident presently, um, do you feel like it's your, you know, your duty, in a sense, to push these locally grown beers 
and to becoming, you know, regionally and subsequently domestically available beers. Like, what is your personal, uh, you know, insight into that? My personal insight to that is that I, I, I'm really good friends with all of our local brewers, and I think it's very important that we support support the local community the way we would with, uh, with you know, locally grown food and crops and stuff like that. There's local agriculture, so we now have breweries on Long Island. It's very important. You know, this is somebody's kids that we're sending to college. So realistically, if we're supporting them, we're supporting the community. And, you know, they give back to the community all the time. And, I mean, what's better than a, a beer that's made, you know, a couple blocks away from your hometown by a guy that lives around the corner that you're, you know, his wife goes to the PTA meetings with your wife. So it's a, you know, it's, it's a cool thing. It's definitely great supporting the local breweries. Hey, Phil from Grace Out Bay, how do you feel about working with Claire Rose? I love Claire Rose. Barry McLaughlin, he's my uh, brand champion. He's my man. Phil has a great beard. Yeah, Mike has a great beard. I do, but Phil's is pretty sweet. Like, old salt, like, like on the next season of Deadliest Catch, Phil, you know, catches crabs. <laughs> <laughs> While, while sitting at my desk and making things happen. Phil caught crabs in, like, 98, bro. I don't know how well you know. It's not contagious, is it? They're back. <laughs> when Phil's crabs strike again on the next Geraldo. <laughs> Are you guys serving crabs at the Bay Fest? Yes. Okay, awesome. Phil's crabs. All right, cool. Alaskan King oh, or, like, snow Brit crabs? Rose. Hello. Speaking of Claire Rose, this is Britt Rose. How you doing, Britt Rose? Wonderful. We are the Beer Amigos. Very nice. I love the hat. It rhymes. You know, it kind of feels like this is meant to be. It, it just might be. We're talking to your buddies here. We're talking to your buddies here about uh, distributing uh, Long Island craft beers and beyond. Very, very nice. It's uh, Craft beer is the new thing. It's, it's on the rise for sure. Yes. Latest and greatest. Um, I kind of want to bring it back slightly serious for just a second, but do you feel as a larger company that, that represents, you know, such entities as Anheuser-Busch products, do you feel like it's your responsibility to subsequently support the local beers that are in your immediate area? Because Claire Rose is a regional distributor, you know, a regional distributor. Um, uh, absolutely, absolutely. We have, we have a network that allows us to be in, a, a, you know, a, a plethora. I'm, can I say plethora? Yeah, is that, that sure, okay? For, uh, for, uh, you know, we're in a lot of accounts. We're in all the accounts on Long Island because of Budweiser. Uh, what what are you saying? I can't. I can't. Three hear. local breweries. Claire Rose, a Long Island company. We've already had it. Hey, they didn't exist for seventy five years. Late to the table. Phil, we we interviewed about that. Right. Phil from Great South Bay. That's me. Late to the table. But seriously though, local company started by this man's grandfather. Okay, is the only distributor to lo to distribute three Long Island yes. beers. Yeah. And the, reason, and the reason why it's so important that we have them is because we're everywhere. Budweiser's everywhere, Bud Light's everywhere, Heineken's everywhere. So we're in all the retailers already. So what it allows, it allows these, uh, these breweries, these local breweries, a, a much larger footprint um, than if they were self-distributing. So, you know, our, our salesmen are already in the markets so they can sell in, you know, the Blue Point bottles. We're, we've got a strong RBC presence. So we're in those accounts already so it's huge it's really big uh, yeah absolutely it, it, in no way was it a loaded question it was more so in the fact that you have that you know you have that reach already that you know those those you know outlets to sell beer but uh, more so in the sense that you're you know in a sense you're eliminating that overhead expense of having you know there, there are reps at these respective breweries but you're freeing them up to do other things that that will help them build their brands and you're really just getting the beer in the, you know, the end spot at, at the end of the day. So, I mean, that's really where my question was going. And it wasn't like, a, it wasn't like an alternate intention behind it. It was really about, like, creating that. And, and that's my job. That's, you know what I mean? That's my job. My job is to go out and, like I said before, educate the consumers about the three local breweries that we have. And show them, hey, beer isn't just fuzzy yellow liquid. You know, it's not mass-produced fuzzy yellow liquid. These are people that are putting in the effort every day, and it's called craft beer for a reason. You know, and, and, and it's incredible to have these three breweries within our portfolio and, like I said, interact with these guys on a daily basis. I mean, at the end of the day, people are always going to drink big beer, whether, you know, we as craft beer lovers not love that or not. To do with it. <laughs> but if we could, you know, change one person's mind that you know about beer and 
show them something new and open their eyes to what's out there. That's really where the opportunity lies. And I think that's really, you know, the positive outlook of it in general, because it's not going to be an overnight thing. And, you know, it is much bigger than anyone probably thought it would be at any point. But it's really great to see that get to the local roots and, you know, the local product distribution. So, I mean, really going forward, that's really where our opportunity is. And uh, we really just want to thank Barry for his genuine interest in growing local brands and playing a huge role in that. So thanks for your time, Barry. Thank you so much, Barry. Absolutely. Thank you. you thank you guys for having me. Good stuff. Take Cheers. care. Cheers. Cheers. We are here with Liam Hudak of the Long Island Brewing Company, coming out of brewing out of Riverhead, New York. Um, Liam is nominated for 2011 Sales Rep of the Year. Liam, tell us. Uh, Two-time nominee. Two-time Two nominee. nominee. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that dropping that knowledge mid-interview. Um, tell us how you feel about that. Well, honestly, uh, I want to be the Susan Lucci of the Golden Taps, <laughs> and that it, it's an honor to be nominated. And to be perfectly frank. If the Golden Tap Awards raises awareness of tap beer and local beer, then I'm totally cool with it. If I win, super. Even if I don't win, the guy or gal who does is doing my job as well. I'm an evangelist for craft beer. I Testify. Testify, brother. Testify. Craft beer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, the Long Island Brewery is nominated for... Um, 2011 New Beer of the Year, um, the Black Friday, Black Friday Imperial Stout. Stout. Yep. Um, tell us a little bit about that beer and how it like, how it was uh, how it came over by you know craft beer consumers. The Black Friday Imperial Stout is actually our first bottle release. Uh, we call it our Black Friday Imperial Stout because we release it on Black Friday. That's the day after Thanksgiving. The craziest shopping year. The wackiest day shopping year. day of the year. Yeah. Uh, it's our first bottle release. We're going to do it every year. It's a limited release. We do X number of bottles released on the day, and once it's gone, it's gone. Get it while the getting's good. Get it while the getting's good. Or it's not going to be had. Uh, it's an imperial stout. It's got notes of chocolate, dark fruit, and you know, as it rests, it's like drinking melted ice cream is how I would describe it. Nice. I like ice cream. Yeah, me too. Who doesn't like ice cream? Clearly, I'm a fat kid. Fat kid. All right. <laughs> um, the brewery is nominated for Brewery of the Year. Um, actually, I, I'm i disclosing this here. Um, I actually personally voted for the Long Island Brewery. Um, I feel like, you know, aside from the bottles that you did, the Black Friday and the, the double IPA, um, you have one of the most sessionable rosters, in my opinion. And I feel like that's important, um, you know, for – I feel like you guys are like – in the best way, um, like the blue-collar brewers. and Thank you for saying that. We're blue-collar guys. We like making beer that we like to drink. You know, I'm admittedly a beer nerd, okay? I like the stuff that you have to write a term paper about. However, with the development of the American drink, a beer-drinking palate, you know, how about you just make a beer that people like to drink? Beer that you don't have to, you know... It's not a song and dance. Do a song and dance about. Thank you very much. Our Celtic Ale, boom. Sessionable. Malty. Smooth. Our Pale Ale, a little bit of a hop bite. Cascade and Columbus. A little higher ABV. You know, the, the Breakfast Stout. The Breakfast Stout's amazing. Session beer, brewed with Kenyan coffee. You know, it's got a little chocolate, milky thing going on. But it's only 3.5%. And, of course, our, our seasonal right now is our raspberry wheat. It's approachable. It's more raspberry in the nose. You're not drinking a, a jar of jelly. It's actually the first wheat beer I've ever fall, fallen in love with, as Mike knows. Yeah, and actually, uh, we did review that beer on our show. Um, I don't know if, if you recollect, but it did relatively well. It got, a, it got four Pistol Pete's on our show, which, which is out of five. Four out of five Pistol Pete's? That's, that's pretty good. That's quattro. <laughs> Quattro <laughs> Pistol Pito. So um, you recently did a, um, you had a collaborative beer release with the Blind Bat Brewery at a center port. Um, it's a Saison style beer. Uh, Farmhouse Hale, obviously, you know, another moniker that, you know, um, is associated with the Saison. Tell us about that beer. Um, I know you did a simulcast yesterday where, you you know, there's a, simult a simultaneous um, tapping of cask-conditioned um, beer 
that was, you know, done at the same exact time at different locations. Four different spots. Right. This is our first saison. We did four casts. We released them at Corey's Ale House, the Cortland, which is immediately adjacent to us, Tap and Barrel in Hot Bog, and the Black Sheep in Mineola. It's a very approachable saison. Comes in just north of 6% on, on ABV. It's not overly peppery. It's not overly lemony. I would like to imagine it is as if a, you know, a French farmer were to have made this beer with his son on his farm. You know, it's, it's not like, let's go crazy with Saison and double this and triple that. <laughs> it's a very approachable beer. Um, we like making beer that people drink. Tell us about how Long Island Craft Beer Week, ha- you know, the importance of it and the importance of your, you know, the Long Island Brewery participating and everyone being involved. You know, what are the advantages of doing so versus, you know, not being as active? I know you guys did a lot of events, you know, you, some tap takeover, some simulcast. Tell me a little bit about that. The importance of Craft Beer Week, as far as I'm concerned, is first and foremost to raise awareness of craft beer of locally made locally produced beer we're celebrating absolutely we're we're celebrating we're celebrating now I can sit in a craft beer meeting with craft beer people and we can talk about how great craft beer is but that's preaching to the choir the importance of craft beer week whether it's craft beer week here on Long Island or New York City, or in Portland, or Kuala Lumpur, is to go out amongst the peoples of the earth and say, hey, this is what beer tastes like. Why don't you try some? And if your neighborhood bar puts on one line of craft beer, and one person says, holy cow, this is what beer is supposed to taste like, then we and the craft beer community, we've done our job. Let's celebrate that win. Yeah. Hallelujah. Celebrate. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Liam. So, um, probably one of the most important questions, and you're the first person we're asking this tonight, but what are you wearing this evening? Could you give us some... Uh... Is that Louis Vuitton? Actually, no. It's uh, These are Farrah slacks. Uh, this is from the Himself Collection from Sears. Vintage. Vintage. Pretty much my entire outfit is uh, is vintage clothing shop in Philadelphia. So when you're buying vintage clothing, think of Saz Vintage. Hopefully they'll pay me for that. Yeah, looks like a wild stallion here. So we wish you um, and the Long Island Brewery, you know, hopefully great success tonight. Maybe you'll we'll, maybe you'll bring something home and uh, we'll come down to the brewery and celebrate that. The fact that I'm here is success enough. We're all winners. You heard it from the man. Awesome guy. Great brewery. Check them out when you have the opportunity. Definitely. Thank you, Liam. Viva los piramigos. Woo! If I could be anyone, I'd be Long Ireland Beer Company. Their beers are magical And they have large testicles Or at least I assume they do Since they're all really big, strong guys If I could be anyone I'd be Long Ireland's beer company Their beers are some of the best And they have large hairy chests Or at least I assume they do Since they're all really big strong guys If I could be anyone I'd be Long Ireland's beer company Oh Lord, if there's another life, I wanna come back and 
see Lord Ireland guys The Lord Ireland guys If I could be Long Ireland Beer Company If I could be anyone I'd be Long Ireland Beer Company If I could be anyone I'd be Long Ireland Beer Company If I could be anyone I'd be Long Ireland Beer Company Beer Company Hi, this is Matthew. And Lori Spitz, and we're at the local Mega Mart eating all the free samples for lunch. But we wanted to take time out to wish the Beer Amigos a happy third anniversary. Cheers. Cheers. We are here with Evan from the Barrier Brewing Company. He is presently in front of us. We're super grateful that he's here with us at the Blue Point Cascales Festival. Today you poured your Oil City IPA. and yeah, IPA and also your American Pale Ale. Perhaps you could tell us a little bit about that. I actually, uh, prior to talking about that, put that American Pale Ale in my top three today for sure, without a doubt. So uh, give us some insight as to how you came about bringing those today and uh, what, you know, what brought you to put Peaches and Simcoe in that. So. Okay, well, the Bittersweet Pale Ale, it's one of like two American Pale Ales we do. One's a green room, um, which is a little more toasty, a little more floral. Uh, this guy uh, tends to be a little more... Uh, Round, I guess, is a, somewhat is a word I've been using a little bit. It's kind of a little more well balanced. Um, not as bitter as the green room, but it's a lot more citrusy, uh, borderline IPA, but without the bitterness. Um, really citrusy. Uh, some New Zealand hops, and with our casks, we've kind of been having some fun. We kind of uh, tend to use like fruit or sear like a maple syrup or molasses. Um, this one happened to be peaches. It's kind of a nice fermentable sugar. Uh, it also gives it some some peach flavor. Um, we use a coal sheath for that beer as well, which also gives like a peach ester, um, peach pear ester from the yeast, and uh, so kind of just plays off that. And um, you know, Simcoe, it's another hop we use in that beer as well. So kind of just you know have some fun with with the beer and see what happens. So any any time we any time we use like a fruit like that, it's always kind of. Uh, kind of a risk because you never know you know you're handling the fruit there's a lot of like there's different yeast strains on that on that fruit to begin with so anytime it comes out good we're always happy and this one came out pretty nice yeah you're like the the outcome is a crapshoot because like i don't know what's going to be the end result but yeah i really enjoyed it um super like super glad that you're here you know we've had your beers where like you've had you know people representing your brewery um, but it's always nice to have a beer, you know, provided and poured by the brewer. Um, it's great that we're here at the Blue Point Brewery because recently, unfortunately, you guys had some, you know, troubling events with the with the super storm Sandy. Yeah. And uh, the Sandy Relief beer was actually brewed where we're standing presently, not at this spot, but at this facility. And um, that's got to be kind of cool to, for that to come full circle and you guys be back on your feet and brewing in your own facility, you know, all systems go. So maybe you could provide us, you know, unfortunately a little bit tragic, how you guys overcame that and where you are today. Right. Well, yeah, we're, um, you know, we've said it a, a few times, many times, we're really, we're floored by the, the like, the local outreach that we got from everyone, um, you know, when we were kind of hit by the storm. Uh, but yeah, we're happy to be brewing again, putting everything behind us. 
Um, and we really wanted to make it a point to come back out here and uh, kind of just, you know, be pouring beers that we've brewed since the storm here. And, uh, you know, and we're looking to grow as a business, too, as, as a brewery. And we, you know, we realize we sell most of our beer in, in the city, in the boroughs. And, uh, you know, we want to kind of obviously continue to do that, but also kind of get more of a presence on the island. I feel like a lot of people, you know, don't know who we are still. And we've been around for three years. So that's our fault. And uh, we're trying to turn that around. So we wanted to kind of make this a jumping off point for that. And just, you know, we're a Long Island brewery. We should have a little more a little more presence on, on Long Island. I like knowing that every time I go to Jimmy's number 43, I can expect a, a barrier beer on tap. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jimmy's is a great, great guy. Jimmy's a great guy. And they pour a lot of our beer. Um, we do catch it a lot at barbecue. I've had the Oil City at barbecue. Yep. This is my question. The Unimperial IPA, one of the most full-bodied Unimperial IPAs I've ever had. Okay. It's truly an Unimperial IPA. It is. 4%. Um, high mash temperature, low fermentation temperature. Um, it's it kind of keeps a lot of its full body. Some, we use some dext- a good amount of dextrin malt um, and some really full-bodied, like two-row two row, uh, two UK four-malted yeah. barley. It's, it's truly hard to believe, but I... Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you've had a mic, had but I. Imperial barbecue, actually. Yeah, it's it's my, it's mind blowing for an unimperial IPA. It's phenomenal, that's phenomenal. What we, that's what we wanted, really. Like the hop, the hop bill of like a just a normal IPA, and uh, you know, in the body of a right, really nice, sessionable, you know, easy drinker that that uh, you'll have a problem getting drunk off of, yeah. which is <laughs> which is what we like. I mean, a lot of our beers are below seven percent, right, so right. you know, and that's kind of our not I shouldn't say our philosophy, but. You know, we like sampling a lot of different beers throughout the night. We don't tend to brew beers that you can have, uh, you know, a pint of it and you're done for the night. Even though I have a pint of one Imperial and I'll be probably <laughs> vomiting in the corner because I'll be wasted. Yeah. But especially me at one, especially me at uh, 135 pounds, sadly. The, these guys have an expansive roster. If you check out their website, you'll be floored actually about how many brews, like how many actual beers they, you know, are producing at any given time, um, which is a great thing. You know, you switch it up. Uh, offer you quite an array of things, and so, you got the hopped lemonade. Yeah, it, absolutely. And I'm like limeade. I'm like, I want to yeah. go to there. <laughs> so hopefully, Travis and I can can definitely make a trip out there and visit you guys, yeah. and maybe get get the tour and have like you know a little bit more thorough of an interview and, and get some insight yeah. as to what you guys have going on. I know that I'm looking forward to, to more of your beers heading out east uh, and hopefully seeing more of you guys. Um, that aside, you recently bottled one of your first beers. Um, so maybe you can tell us about that experience and, and kind of the reception you received about that. Yeah. Um, well, the first un- unofficial, we'd love to have you guys down anytime you want to come down. Um, we just set it up and love to make that happen. Um, Since we're friends now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anytime. They uh, do exist. <laughs> or do we? We, uh, yeah, the, the, uh, the first bottle release, which is like an unofficial, was a submersion double IPA that kind of survived the storm in the tank. Came out really nice, uh, but our, the first official bottle, whatever official means, we're um, <laughs> we're going to be releasing that wholesale. We we did a bottle release like two weeks ago with the brewery. Um, it's an imperial. We're calling it like an imperial pale ale. Um, it's kind of it's borderline barley wine as well. It's going to turn into like more of a barley wine, like a, a hoppy American barley wine. Uh, it's all Zythos hopped, um, 10 percent. Um, it's really full-bodied, some like really nice caramel, toffee uh, flavors from the from the malt, and then just really nice like floral, citrus notes from those Zythos hops that we used. Um, it's really you know that's we with the, the the way the brewery's built. It's such a small system that it's, the tanks are such the brew house tanks are such that basically we had to brew six batches, six mashes of this beer to make enough to bottle it. So. So we every time we brewed it, we, we double mashed, sent it into one tank. Basically, every every mash yields us three barrels of beer. So uh, two mashes a day over the course of like a month, basically, you know, filled up one fermenter. I'm, I'm not explaining it well because I'm fucking, I'm, I'm drunk, but two mashes per fermenter. Fermented the batch, transferred it to our 15-barrel bright. So we did that three times. And then we yielded enough to bottle it, and then Trent, and many other processes, but uh, from, uh, primed it, bottle. <laughs> it all sounds good to us, I Tail promise. Tail end of the day. Tail end of the yeah. day. Yeah. We uh, bottle conditioned it with honey, 
and uh, it came out pretty nice. Have you guys had it? I'm no, I've not. I haven't, unfortunately. But um, we I, w- I was actually at the original brewery in Oceanside, the first location. Okay. I've not been to the second location. I don't know. I don't know about Mike, I but haven't, I haven't. But we definitely need to go out there. Yeah. We just set up a hot date with the guys at Barrier and uh, <laughs> break bread and drink some beers for sure. We got some bottles there, obviously. But uh, and we always got between ten and fifteen beers on tap. We got the the hop lemonades, yeah. hop limeades. So just having having fun. I appreciate it. Well, thank you, thank you so much, Evan. Uh, where exactly are you located in Oceanside? Three thousand one New Street, Unit A two, Oceanside, New York. Keep an eye out for their stuff on tap, and uh, be sure to order it if you see it. Thanks again. Cool. Thank you, guys. Thank you. We are here post the. Golden Tap Award. Thanks, Drive. Good looking out. With Sue from Hoptron Boutique and Mike Philbrick from the Port Chef Brewing Company. And we're here at Hoptron Boutique in Patchogue. We are beers deep in Hoptron. Um, I was going to use another reference, but it was not appropriate for our wide range of listeners. Are, we, are, we, we're, are, we, are you saying we're balls deep in Mike Philbrick? <laughs> I am pretty much saying that. Yeah, man. Again? 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 Again. <laughs> it's been a great night. Hoptron is, is a, you know, pretty much new on the block, but pretty great venue for drinking beers. Um, Mike Philbrick was acknowledged, and his crew, you know, you know that's also important. Let's acknowledge the whole team at Port Jeff Brewing Company pertaining to the uh, their contribution to the Sandy Relief beer. Mike, maybe you can give us a little insight as to, as to how that came to fruition and, and the greatness that has come from that in raising close to and over $60,000 of, of money to be distributed to you needy parties. <laughs> Mike, what's 90 divided by 4? Uh, $58,000. You won! <laughs> Which is split between two guys. Twenty nine grand. Make yeah. money, money, make money, money, money. Craft beer week. So, so, how did it feel getting involved with the Sandy Relief beer? I, you feel good. I mean, how else would you feel? You know, it's. I, I, we we got together to make beer to for a cause because we realized we could have an impact and it, and it worked, which is excellent. And uh, hopefully, we get together and do it again. Not only to just brew the beer. But for all the brewers to get together again, I think it was it was very almost ceremonial that all the brewers got together and were able to like share a day where we hung out, you know, came down to Patchog, had dinner at a few few establishments, and uh, and made things happen. So it was, it was a fun time for everybody. You know who joined us? Mike from Superstar Beverage North Babylon, who carried Surge Protector. Is that correct, Mike? I sure did, and uh, I loved every minute of it. All right. <laughs> that was a beer that was hard to come by, and, and for a great reason. I mean, people really, like, seeked it out. Like, it was the white whale, if you will. Uh, is a reference it as, as something that beer lovers, enthusiasts, reference to beers that are incredibly hard to come by. But a great cause, and obviously, um, for both Barrier and for the, the local communities that un- were unfortunate, you know, in the, in the fortunate position of dealing with the devastation of, of Sandy and everything it brought to to our shores and, and coastlines. Mike poured, uh, they offered at Hoptron today the Party Boat um, IPA, which was named um, via a contest, correct, Mike? Yeah, it was, it was named by a contest, but the, the reality of it is, is the original recipe is from our... Our, one of our brewers, Jamie Partridge, who goes by the name of Jay Party. So, Party Boat was basically a tribute to him, but at the same time, it's you know, it's like a fishing vessel or a vessel you'd get on to like go hang out for somebody's bachelor party or what have you. So, ends up working pretty well. But the, I think what really works is the fact that it's a nasty ass IPA. It actually gives a nice bitterness, a nice uh, hop overtone in the aroma. And it's like a drink all day IPA uh, that you probably shouldn't be drinking all day. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Definitely a sessional IPA where uh, if, if you party boat it too hard, you're going to be lights out. Yeah, I started Mike's pants. Mike's pants came off about uh, two and a half hours ago. Apparently they did. I don't recollect that, but it's very possible that I was walking around socks naked, yeah. balls bouncing. Um, I know that thank this. Thank God <laughs> for the life preserver. <laughs> I thank God for that. I believe that this beer was available. Um, actually, I reg- I digress. The party hop. I mean, uh, the hop star that you recently brewed 
was available exclusively at the Superstar Beverage. Maybe you can give us a little insight as to how that went down and how it was received. Well, we just wanted to do a, uh, a specialty beer uh, that we could offer our customers at Superstar Beverage. Uh, and we, we uh, looked to uh, Port Jeff to uh, collaborate with the beer and, and, and uh, try to do a collaboration with them to have him produce a beer for us, an IPA that we want to, to sell to our customers for Long Island Craft Beer Week. Uh, he used a bunch of mosaic hops, was extremely difficult for him to get. Uh, I, I believe that he, he did two split shipments, uh, <laughs> one at his brewery, one to his house to get some of those mosaic hops, the five pounds or three pounds of mosaic hops. And uh, we want to produce something very easily drinkable for our customers, and it is delicious. Yeah, man. I'm, I mean, this is definitely beer that I've had a lot locally. Um, Mike's personally, you know, Mike's behind the wheel delivering the goods. And, I, and I've seen him. I've seen him in depth, you know, doing the work, grinding it out, working long days, you know, with a bad foot, as we learned on Saturday at the Bay Festival. The Toe Bay fungus. Tour. But again, you know, committed to that cause. And um, we are grateful that you're doing it, and, and everyone in the area should be. Um, we look forward to what you have to bring to the table, both from a Port Jeff Brewery standpoint, as well as Superstar. It's our go-to local, you know, local merchandiser of beer. And, uh, you know, it's summertime, so there's no reason for you to not, you know, take a ride down Port, visit Mike and crew. Give him a smooch on the lips and tell him the beer amigos sent you. And check out all the superstar beverages across Long Island, guys. Yeah, man. Um, good stuff coming up this summer, and we look forward to being a part of it. You better be a part of it. If not, you're a fool, a hooligan, whatever else. We'll see you later. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> Hey, this is Travis from the Beer Amigos. I am standing here with Nico Kremitis from Super Neat Beer Adventure Yes, who was our first ever in-studio guest many months ago. We have not caught up with Nico since. We want to know what he's up to. You want to know what he's up to. So, Nico, can you give us a little insight on what Super Neat Beer Adventure Yes is up to at the current moment? Uh, you know, stuff. Okay. Uh, can, you, can you just give us a little more detail than stuff? Yeah, um, uh, a lot of stuff, actually. Okay, uh, I know you, you do the blog posts, uh, you do uh, a lot of the marketing now for Port Jeff Brewing Company, you've worked with Black Sheep L House, so you're jack of all trades. Um, give us a little insight on uh, how your work with Port Jeff is going. Um, I'd actually like to talk about something else. Uh, how are the beer amigos doing, Travis? Uh, <laughs> uh, the beer amigos are, are uh, doing very well. Um, as I told our listeners, uh, Mike cannot be with us today because he's actually in Philadelphia. He's uh, living out the dream, auditioning for the 12th season of American Idol, which is great. Go, Mike. Uh, but besides that, we're doing really well, getting ready for our Winterfest event at the Cortland on December 22nd and just doing what we do pe best, which is uh, podcasting. I want a sombrero. <laughs> uh, we, we will... Uh, Possibly uh, find a way. No, I don't think it's going to happen. I think Mike and I wear sombreros. Everyone knows I'd look nice, real nice, in a sombrero. Okay. Um, are you attempting to say you'd like to be part of the Beer Amigos? I want to be the Beer Amigo, Travis. Me. So just Mike and I step aside, let Nico Kermitas come in. Yeah, um, you know, change it to the Beer Amigo, and uh, I, th I think it'd be, you know, pretty interesting to chronicle the the adventures, the tomfoolery of the Beer Amigo, Nico Kermitas. It could also be, I guess, the Beer Aniko. Uh, and uh, I don't, I don't like that, honestly. All right. Well, um, this is incredibly awkward. I was hoping we could talk about you, but um, how about we give you a little test run? How about Nico Kermitas of the Beer Amigos? interviews Nico Kremitis from Super Neat Beer Adventure, yes, and then we can have our listeners tell us whether or not you'd be a good fit to be the only beer amigo. Piece of cake. All right, this is Nico Kremitis of The Beer Amigo, and we're interviewing Nico Kremitis of Super Neat Beer Adventure, yes, Long Island's only mediocre beer blog. Nico, will you tell us a little bit about what's been going on lately uh, in the craft beer world within Long Island? 
Uh, yeah, things are actually going really well. I'm uh, doing okay. That's that's just not important. Um, since Mike is actually in Philadelphia auditioning for American Idol, I think it'd be appropriate if I gave my own rendition of the Beer Amigos theme song, but, you know, I'll slightly alter it to what I think it could be, given the, the right artistic tools behind it. <coughs> me, 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 me. I am the Beer Amigo. My name is Nico. I am the Beer Amigo. Because I am Nico. Um, that was, that was, that was good, Nico. Um, I, okay. Um, well, let, let's talk a bit more about the blog. Uh, so things are go, eh, nah, not, not important. Uh, what's important is I am the only beer amigo on Long Island right now. Okay. Uh, well, I guess if that's the way it's going to be, uh, you guys heard it first. Um, there's no such thing as the Beer Amigos. Mike and I are... St- st- Travis, Travis, you'll be hearing more from me very soon. Uh, take care. All right, I'm going to get out of here. Everybody, check out superneatbeeradventureyes.com. Who loves the Beer Amigos? Nico Kremitis of Super Neat Beer Adventure, yes, loves the Beer Amigos. Is it true? I do, I do, I do, ooh. Happy third hour. We are here with the gentleman from Greenport Harbor Brewing Company. Um, always a fan of your beers and your company. Um, we've done a few uh, sessions at the Coliseum where we've discussed different things. But um, here we are with John and Rich and Christian. Um, not drinking one of your beers yet. Uh, I have the other side IPA. But... Let's talk about the other side IPA, which was recently received some accolades. Um, let's talk about how that came into fruition. Are you guys even brewing that beer? Um, maybe you could tell us a little bit how that how that happened. Yeah, it was. Uh, so that beer was. Uh, so basically, our initial IPA was Disorient IPA. If you remember that, um, we uh, due to several legal issues with the state liquor authority couldn't secure that name Disorient. Even though it was clearly named after Orient, which was the town over from Greenport. Directly adjacent. Directly adjacent. They didn't buy that. So we, rather than going to a dedicated IPA, did an IPA series. And other side was our West Coast style IPA. So really full hops, pretty aggressively hopped. Um, awesome beer. We all loved it when it you know, released. Um, and then when it came back to release again this year, we kind of decided to release it as our full-time IPA. And in conjunction with that, we entered the blind IPA tasting at, at, in Brooklyn. Is um, it Muggs Ale House, right? Muggs Ale House. Uh, against like uh, Lagunitas, uh, uh, Dogfish Head, Six Point, Blue Point. A bunch of breweries, great breweries uh, that we love. And we ended up winning. So we felt a little like we kind of, we, we, we knew what was going on, you know, for once where uh, we actually introduced that beer ahead of it winning um, a, a blind taste test. So we were pretty happy. But that's how that beer kind of came into existence on a full-time basis. It's now our full-time. Basically, it was my idea. <laughs> well, I mean, that's got to feel good. I mean, again, judged by, by local people. I know that um, at Martha Clara one year, Leaf Pile had, had you know, been recognized and subsequently was able to be released in, in restaurants across Long Island, um, which, which is a nice thing. Um, that being said, we do love everything you pretty much make. And I know that Trav recently um, attended the Jackson's um, Beer Dinner where um, your beers were paired with certain foods, and he had a great time. Trev, maybe you could elaborate on that a little bit um, to share that with our, our listeners because you did kind of post photos like course to course yeah. as, as to what you're eating. My one question, which I didn't get an answer to, is who actually chooses what beer is paired with what meal at your beer you know, dinners? You know, we always work with the restaurant to come up with the... the Basically, any beer that is in rotation at that point is up for the beer dinner that is, you know, during that time period. 
and we'll work with the chef and like decide what the right beer is for what he's thinking. You know, I mean, I think the cool thing about beer right now is that people are, are starting to imagine it like uh, wine, where it is, you know, certain beers go with certain foods, and there's a lot more thought that goes into it. And we feel like to just kind of push beers onto a restaurant is crazy when you have, you know, these great restaurants that are making amazing food and really, like, working with them to get to the menu of what they're making and get to the, you know, the beer menu is the, is the best way to go. Now, do you guys simply read the menu, or does someone say like Justin go down to the place taste the food and decipher yes it will go well with this you know dish well you know we'll there's a lot of trust involved so we, we will try and get the chef the, the beer in you know 99% of the time so they can kind of get a sense of where that beer is going and what type of foods he makes pairs well um, but yeah, no, we don't require that we taste the food ahead of right, right. it being on the menu. We, we like, you know, usually, you know, thankfully are um, associated with really good restaurants and great chefs. And uh, we've been very lucky to have some pretty amazing beer dinners, which we, you were a part of. The beer dinner was absolutely incredible. And Mike, I think Mike was a little jealous and I had the opportunity to head down there. I was definitely jealous. Um, but I do get like what John's saying in the sense of like, just as much as like, these gentlemen don't want someone being like, hey, brew this beer this way because that's what we want to drink. Like, yeah, you take those things into account, but at the end of the day, you're going to brew the beer that you inevitably want to brew. Uh, and, and the same thing for the chef. I mean, it's a matter of mutual respect. Um, and, and really, like you said, you know, you have the choice as to what restaurants you're doing it with. And that's kind of like where your control is. Like, okay, if this chef, you know, tends to, to make phenomenal cuisine or, or specializes in like, you know, let's say like American fare or like, you know, is, is a tra classically changed French chef, you kind of know like what dishes or like what wheelhouse that chef's going to work in. So, I mean, that absolutely makes sense. Um, because again, like you don't want too many cooks in the kitchen for lack of a better, like, you know, uh, cliche. Um, I unfortunately didn't have the opportunity to go. This bastard didn't even invite me. Uh, very inconsiderate of him. Sorry. But um, I know that we briefly touched on you guys opening a second facility in our previous interview. Maybe you could give us some insight as to where that is and, and what's going on there. Sure. So, yep, we're, uh, we're moving along in Peconic. Um, it's, uh, we're scheduled to come online with making beer by, uh, you know, sometime in the uh, end of July. Early, early August, John's touching my ass. I don't know why. Natural butt grab. It's acceptable. Yeah. Uh, it was very gentle. <laughs> um, I love so that. we're, uh, yeah, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be, uh, you know, pretty phenomenal. We're really psyched. We're going to have a, uh, uh, we're hoping to have a uh, um, kind of a show place brewery location. We're then going to follow that as quickly as we can with our tasting room that's going to have a beer garden and ultimately a, be a brew pub by uh, uh, the end of the year. Um, we're going to be bottling at that location. We're uh, kind of to the point before, we're actually pretty excited because I think we're going to start bottling our other side, IPA, as soon as we can. Um, so in seven fifties or in six packs? You know, we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna start with uh, you know with the twelve ounce uh, bottle, uh, six packs, and then uh, you know we still because we'll be opening the larger kind of um, location that'll accommodate more volume in Peconic. It's going to allow us to kind of move Greenport, which we're keeping. We're not moving out of Greenport, but it's going to allow Greenport to become more of kind of a test kitchen for us and allow us to do more of those kind of limited one-off runs that would be, you know, whether we do something that's going to be a 750 or what have you. So, um, you know, all of that is kind of coming together so that by the end of the summer, we'll be online there. So, yeah, we're pretty psyched about that. That's awesome. Uh, that's definitely something we look forward to. Uh, it's nice to see, you know, specifically, you know, obviously the Blue Point, you know, brewery, we, we pretty much see everywhere. Um, but we see Spider Bite now doing some bottling, and, and it'll be great to see you guys there as well uh, with the Long Island based specifically breweries um, as you make, you know, make way west, westbound to Christian's territory because uh, you're the city guy, right? Yeah, yeah that's correct. Representing uh, Greenport in 
the boroughs in general, or yeah, it's definitely in uh, the five boroughs. Uh, we have another. We have Justin, our other sales guy, does uh, the Long Island thing. So I just concentrate in Manhattan and you know try to get uh, partner uh, you know with these good restaurants and accounts and make sure that we get some good relationships going. People who understand what we're trying to do and what we're trying to achieve and say through our product, and it's it's it's, it's a blast. It's a lot of fun. And uh, have you have you found like the their beers have been received? I mean, obviously being received extremely well out here. Um, there's a lot of distributors that I even go to personally making their rounds looking for limited stuff that's from out of state, you know, and I'll see like a, a significant amount of Greenport taps like prison. Um, how do you find that's been transitioning into the, the boroughs and the Manhattan area specifically? Well, we find that we uh, we really like to uh, partner with the people, you know, like, like I was saying before, that, you know, understand it. But we found that the best reception have been, like, honestly, with the people who know what's going on, the people that understand the industry. And it's not just the people who are just trying to put everything up against the wall that's new, because that's really popular, is to just do what's new and exciting and everything like that. But we, we really strive to go to the places where, it, you know, it's a, it's a good concept and we're paired with food. I mean, that, you know, going back to the beer dinner thing, I think it's um, something we really look to do is uh, make sure that our, our product is represented with good quality food and it's, in, it's represented in a good atmosphere because everybody's just going to have a good time and that's you know that's what we want so. yeah absolutely um has there been a specific beer you've had the most success with in transitioning into that market um, the other the other side IPA has been really big for us. I think it may be because we kind of starved that market for a little while and didn't do uh, you know a, a, a consistent IPA. Everybody wanted us to, and then when we finally came out with it, I think it, it, it was the right decision on uh, these guys over here to you know choose that one. Or John, John is saying that it was he, my idea. Okay. <laughs> well, whoever. Regardless, everything has been Rich's idea so far. <laughs> it was a great decision, whoever's it, it, it was, because everybody was looking for that and they really wanted. Wanted that kind of accessible, uh, really good, you know, local IPA. So, and it's not to say it's not to say we're exclusive in that. There are a lot of good IPAs out there, but uh, that that has really been a big, uh, you know, a, a, a big mover for us. I'm not exaggerating when I say my wife talks about the other side of IPA at least once a week. More she, than you. Yeah, she doesn't she doesn't get the opportunity to have it once a week, but she mentions wanting it at least once a week. <laughs> you're like you're like you turn around and she's like, no, the other side IPA, not your other side. <laughs> and, I mean, and an IPA is a great segue beer in general because, I mean, a lot of people, are, you know, automatically look for, they associate IPA with, like, hop-heavy beers and so on and so forth. But uh, it's a great beer category in general. It's probably the most known, like, you know, from a craft beer drink or even just people, like, introducing into that area um, where they'll have that beer and then maybe maybe come the fall the black duck porter will be on and they'll be like you know what i'm gonna have one of those because it's delicious and you should always have one of those when it's available <laughs> yeah i mean i feel like you know to your earlier point the, the bottling thing and where we are with bottling i mean we're really looking to make beer like we make the beer that we want to make black duck porter that you mentioned we make year-round from day one, um, Porter is not a is not a year round beer. Usually, people in the summer kind of view a dark beer as being a little bit too much. They want something lighter. We don't look at beer that way. We look at beer through our own kind of you know goggles. So um, we, for that reason, make that beer year round. We you know with the bottling thing, we could have entered packaging much earlier. We decided we want to control all of our brewing um, and not contract brew out and have our bottles done somewhere else. So that is a, a big reason why we're so late to market, you know, with our bottling is because we want people that when they try any of our beers to be able to say good or bad, that Greenport was, you know, on the, the uh, production side of, yeah, you're, of you're making that beer. Candidate. I mean, understandable. Yeah. I mean, you want to control that. And I respect that greatly. I mean, from a, from a brand integrity standpoint, you know, like, like you said, everything that you make, everything you're putting out, you have direct control over. You guys are, you know, calling the shots at the end of the day. Yeah, and I will say, too, that one of the things that we're really excited about is next year, uh, I'm committed and the brewery's committed to we're going to be actually making a 100% Long Island ingredient beer. So by next summer, we're actually going to be using malted barley grown on Long Island. We're going to be using hops grown on Long Island. We're going to actually bring, it'll be a one-off style, but it will be a Long Island grown beer, much to the idea of kind of like owning where we are and where we are is where what we want the beer to taste like and we want the beer to taste like the, the ground upon which it's grown 
And that, to me, is really important because Long Island is, is growing in terms of a, a beer kind of centric place, a craft beer place. So it's next year, there's going to be a lot happening, even more so than this year. And next year, it's going to be a 100% Long Island beer that we're going to be brewing. I mean, the ability to even leverage local crops and, you know, local product in general is an amazing opportunity that not everyone can say, like, they can't say they can do that. Um, I mean, if you just even, like, stepping stepping out of this immediate conversation, if you, even, you look at Paul at Blind Bat, you know, he tends to use a lot of local ingredients, like local potatoes. Or, you know, he's a big stout guy. He's a, a Long Island potato stout today, a Saison, you know, sweet potatoes. Probably. You're drinking the sweet potatoes. Yeah. Yeah. Saison yeah. right now. Yeah. yeah. Delicious. Probably harvest it out of our own soil. And, again, I actually read I actually read an article prior to even coming here today that, that said, like, it was actually in conjunction with, with wine specifically. But where, you know, soils, you know, directly affect, you know, the, the product. So Long Island, you know, traditionally back in the day was a potato growing, you know, you know, island. And it's, there's great soil here in general. The wine business has boomed. So obviously the ability for the, the hops industry and like you said, the grain industry to really take off exists. So why would you not use local ingredients? So, I mean, that's phenomenal, like, really setting the benchmark of, you know, reaping the rewards of local growth and supporting local businesses in every facet from, from like, you know, from the ground up to, to finished product. So um, always a pleasure talking to you guys. And I must interrupt you, Mike, real quick. You guys have your three-year anniversary coming up soon. Four year, four year. When may the four year anniversary party be? It's uh, generally the second weekend of July. Okay. So um, I'm not sure what the date is exactly, but it'll be just about the second weekend. I think Greg Martin from Long Island may be at the uh, fourth anniversary party. Do you guys edit this stuff? Uh, yeah. Oh, fuck yourselves. <laughs> so we'll definitely be there. I have unfortunately never been. But I'm coming. Greg Martin's going to be there as drunk as he is now, if not more. And we look forward to that. Um, this isn't the, the drunk Greg Martin. This is the sober Greg Martin. This, this is actually this is. sober Greg yeah, Martin. Yeah, yeah. But, but listen, out of everybody, you know, listen, we cut our teeth with the guys from Greenport Harbor. So I don't even know what you were talking about when we came in. But we love these guys. We went to our first CBC, Boston, Massachusetts, 2009. These guys weren't open yet. We were just open. We got drunk on the ferry coming oh, yeah. back home, and we've been friends ever since. So it's all good for I, I them, thought, man. I thought Dan was going to kill me, but then I realized he's the nicest guy. Yeah, in the I don't want to be in a dark alley with Dan, but once you get to talk to him, you realize, I don't mind being in a dark alley with Dan. Dan You're like, I want that guy on my side. <laughs> Dan's a horse. He doesn't know how big he is. That's the problem. So, as always, we really enjoy talking to the Greenport guys, the Long Island guys, and we look forward to doing it again in the near future. Until then, keep it clean. Cheers, boys. Cheers. Wash your balls. Hey, this is Travis from the Beer Amigos, and you're listening to Travis and Mike from the Beer Amigos. <laughs> Trav, what are you doing? Oh, sorry. When we listen back to our episodes, we can't help but feel great to know we were there when the Long Island craft beer community came together to brew the Sandy Relief beer, which helped Barrier Brewing get back on their feet after damage the brewery faced from Superstorm Sandy. We were also there when Great South Bay Brewery moved into their larger location. We were also there when Long Island Beer Company began being distributed by Claire Rose. We were there to present an award on stage at the Golden Tap Awards during Long Island Craft Beer Week a few years ago. We were there when Steve and Barrage Brewing were doing all they could to get their doors open. And the same with Mustache Brewing. We were there when Greenport Harbor Brewing Company announced their second location. We were there to conduct interviews with Blind Bat Brewery, Nico of Super Neat Beer Adventure, yes, Brick House Brewery, Beer Loves Company, Crooked Ladder Brewing Company, Fire Island Beer Company, Drunken Unemployed, Montauk Brewing Company, Brewers East End Revival, Long Island Beer and Mall Enthusiasts, Oyster Bay Brewing Company, Port Jefferson Brewing Company, The Rocky Point Artisan Brewers, Spider Bite Beer Company, Ghost Cat Brewing Company, and more as all of them were growing. And we were there when Blue Point Brewing Company was bought out by Anheuser-Busch. So thanks again to everybody for allowing us to conduct these interviews over the last three years, by allowing us to record our silly songs, by allowing us to wear our sombreros, by allowing us to film our music videos, by allowing us to podcast for you. And thank you to each and every one of you that ever bought a t-shirt, that ever listened to an episode, that ever listened to one of our songs, that ever watched one of our videos, and that ever just came up to us and said thank you. Because truthfully, 
everything we're doing is because of everybody else out there, and we feel blessed to be a part of this. So uh, until we meet again, adios, adios amigos. amigos. Thanks for listening. Woo! We are the Beer Amigos. We like beer. We are amigos, and that's why we call ourselves the Beer Amigos. Everybody, we are.